All right. So, right triangles. All right, I'm gonna start off with some vocab. Really important that you understand all the components of a right triangle. All right, we don't just call these sides once we're talking about a right triangle. We have different names for these sides. The first two are gonna be the legs. Actually, let's just not call that legs because here's the other leg, all right? The two sides that make up the right angle are the legs. And then the side, which is also gonna be the longest side of a right triangle, is directly opposite of the right angle is going to be called the hypotenuse. All right, really important vocabulary. You need to know that these are going to be called legs and that all right triangles have a hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and is directly opposite the right angle. Really important. Also really important, the hypotenuse will always be, we're gonna give it a letter, and it will always be C. These two over here are interchangeable, all right, and this is gonna lead up to the Pythagorean theorem, which this video is gonna be on, is A and B interchangeable, doesn't matter. Does not matter. All right, so just for the sake of this one, it could be A, and B. All right, so where the Pythagorean theorem comes in is the Pythagorean theorem comes in by using these letters. And what it is is the hypotenuse squared, no matter what, will equal the sum of both of the legs squared. So this is where you get A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now there is a really fun geometric proof on this where you draw big boxes, squares, and you have a big one up here that's C by C, B by B, A by A. I don't know why I put B there. And you go through and you prove this. For the sake of this video, we're just going to move into the math. Show some different ways that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for different sides. All right, so I'm actually going to write this off to the side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, so let's say I have four, five, and C. All right, so this is the hypotenuse. I don't know what the hypotenuse is. All right, now actually, I wouldn't be putting C here if this was an algebra problem or a geometry problem. It'd probably actually just be X, all right, because we're going to be solving for X. So I'm plugging what numbers I know. This is going to be equal to A. This will be equal to B. All right, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to substitute in. 4 squared plus 5 squared equals, not c squared, x squared. All right, keep going with math. 4 squared, 16, plus 5 squared is 25, equals x squared. All right, now the key part here is I didn't solve, well, I don't, let me add these together, actually. We're going to get 41 x squared. All right, we haven't actually solved for x yet. We have this square that we need to reverse the operation of. The reverse operation of squaring is square rooting. All right, so we're going to have to take the square root of both sides because if you do it to one side, you got to do it to both sides. All right, so we can take the square root of a square. Those operations eliminate each other and you just get x or cancel each other out and we get the square root of 41. all right can you simplify this 
And while this one's prime, so you can't, you can use a calculator and it'll give you a decimal version, I'll approximate it for you. For the sake, for my class, for my students, for now, we're just gonna stop there, all right? We're gonna stop there because I don't want an approximation. I don't want 3.79 or whatever this would come out as an approximation. All right, this is the exact answer. Exact answer. All right, now for the sake of this, I'm gonna show you that it does not matter whether or not you make one of these A or B. So let's change it up. Make this one B and this one A. All right, so if I was to go through this again, and it would be five squared plus four squared equals x squared, gonna still get 25, still gonna get 16, still gonna get x squared, getting 41 again, getting the square root of 41 again. It does not matter which of these two legs you make A or B. It doesn't matter. All that you need to remember is that and that are the legs and that is the hypotenuse, the longest side, all right? So let's try another example where we got a little bit different bit of information. Uh, let's do one that does simplify, all right? So this is a special right triangle one that you can use if you know the multiples of this then you automatically know what kind of triangle it is which you can get into in a later video possibly um, so you got 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared because leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared all right keep it up here I don't know I raised it a squared plus b squared equals c squared all right so you get 9, 16, simplify again, you get 25, then we come in here and we take the square root, square root. Well this time, this time I don't want you to write the square root of 25 here. What I want you to write is the simplified version of that, and that would be 5. Hopefully everybody knows that by now in geometry, square root of 25 is five, all right? I expect my students to know that. Now, you can get positive or negative five. The reason why we don't do the negative five is because no such thing as negative distance. If you travel five feet, you travel five feet, whether you walk forward to do it or you walk backward to do it. There's no negative distance, all right? Remember the, when you're finding distance, that's the absolute value of a measurement. All right, another example. I remember, just for the sake of that, I'm gonna write this up here. Hopefully I remember how to spell it right. Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's change it up a little bit. Let's say we don't have this one, and we got this one and this one. All right, a little bit different now. I have my legs and my hypotenuse, legs, hypotenuse. So one of my legs is gonna be x, so I'm gonna be x squared plus my other leg, x squared equals my hypotenuse squared. All right, so I need to simplify what I can. I can't, I don't know what that is. That's just gonna be x squared. I know what that is, that's 64. That's 144, all right? I need to get x squared by itself before I can take the square root. You cannot take the square root right now. You need to move the 64 across first. All right, you're gonna get x squared equals, whew, quick math in my head. All right, what do we got? 80, 80, right? Yeah, 80. Hopefully you guys know that there's no, there's a square root of 81 which is nine, but there's not a square root of 80. So I'm just gonna have x equals the square root of 80. Again, later on, 
probably going to be simple plunges. But for now, we're going to stop there. That is the exact answer. I don't want the approximation. I don't want decimals. We're going to leave it as a square root. All right? That's going to stop there. That's the answer. The answer I'm looking for for my students now. Um, one more example. Do 9 uh, 13. Put X over there. All right, last example. I really hope this is all showing up on this video. I don't want to redo it. All right, so we got X squared plus 9 squared equals 13 squared that got 81 uh, 169 subtract 81 subtract 81 we get x squared equals 88 88 yeah that sounds about right 88 all right take the square root of that no square root 88 that's not a thing so we got x equals the square root of 88. All right, stop there. If it's like the square root of 100, I want you to put 10. If it's the square root of 36, I want you to put 6. But if it's the square root of 88, we're going to leave it as a square root of 88 for now. All right, that is a quick Pythagorean theorem. Remember, we have our legs and the hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem, the legs squared added together equal the hypotenuse squared. And you should be able to solve for a third leg.